be biting and nipping. Jill from Australia writes about her own staffy. Hi team, my new staffy puppy is causing dramas with the family with the amount of playful biting and mouthing she does during any sort of play or padding session. We have tried giving her her favorite chew toys to distract her from our hands and going ah when she bites, but she won't budge. The hands are what she wants. We've been assertive with the alpha dog technique, but she seems to be picking and choosing when to follow our commands. I'm wondering if she gets confused with our instructions as we have a very noisy household with three kids and the kids are constantly barking orders thinking that they are helping. I'm constantly trying to make them understand that they're actually making things worse. What can I do? Well, I think that she's, she's touched on a key there that they're using the alpha dog technique, but they've got three children getting involved wanting to help. Yeah. And I think probably consistency is the problem with this dog. Sure. They know what they need to do to achieve good results in, in a well-behaved, well-adjusted dog. Right. However, the success of that is really going to depend on how consistent they're going to be able to be because dogs like these typically will give them an inch, they'll take that mile yeah. and more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so. You know, he's a classic in that he thinks that if he's allowed to do something one day, then that applies to the next month. Oh. <laughs> so you need to be really, really consistent. So they, they, I recommend having a family meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, sit nice. down without the dog present, yes. decide what the dog's rules are, mm -hmm. what's okay, what isn't, and how you ask the dog for that. Okay. So you need to make sure that you're using really consistent commands. Um, because they're not really doing a lot wrong, mm -hmm. other than I don't recommend growling at the dog for biting. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's, it's okay if the dog understands that it's been growled at right. and will stop, mm -hmm. but most Staffordshire puppies would like that game to continue and get rougher right. because that's how they like it. Yeah, 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 the yeah. rougher it gets, the better <laughs> they like it. So it's really important for them to make sure that they withdraw attention from this dog for misbehaviour. Yeah. Because as a breed, they don't like being ignored. Mm -hmm. They hate it. <laughs> they're not a dog you can leave in the backyard and no. go and see once no, a day. No, they, they're animals. very social and they yeah. love people. Yeah. So more than anything in the world, this puppy wants their attention. Okay. She's going to use biting to get it because that's one of the only ways she's got at the moment mm -hmm. to get their attention. So she's going to bite their hands when they pat her. She's going to bite their shoes when she's being ignored. Mm -hmm. And that is the time that they can really tell her off. Okay. But they need to be good at it. Yeah. They need to make sure that they use a word like ah is good yeah. that she's using. Don't use no. Okay. Because no is one of those words by virtue of how it's spelt in the English language. It's soft because it ends in a vowel. Oh. So. You can never say no that harshly. Okay. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, when, I, when I use um, words like that as, as a deterrent for my dogs for doing something, um, I use it in conjunction with stamping my foot and clapping my hands generally, and it's designed to startle them, okay. basically. Right. Um, so that they're sort of shocked and get a bit of a fright uh -huh. of what's happening. Yeah. So what I would do with this dog would be to withdraw attention mm -hmm. and make sure you get your consistency sorted. So withdraw attention, sort your consistency, and if she's persisting and just not taking, you know, being ignored as leave me alone, right. then they can introduce telling her off. Yeah. But they must make sure that when they scold her and tell her off, that they don't inadvertently give her attention. So mm. it's just... It's, it's a startle and that's it. There's no other attention given. There's no words spoken to the dog. You mustn't look at them while you're doing it. It's just designed to stop them in their tracks, basically. Okay. Um, I would demonstrate, but he will get a fright. So um, it's not really fair on him right. today to do that. <laughs> you mentioned something interesting to me before. The position that the dog is in right now, you mentioned, is actually a dominant position. It is, absolutely. Yeah, so something... He's relaxing, but you're the new person, yeah. so he's going to try to dominate you. I'm surprised earlier that he didn't actually jump up on the couch yeah. with his front paws because he was trying to get in your face and get your attention by doing that. Right. Because you're ignoring him, mm -hmm. because we're talking, Yes. Um, he's doing what he can mm. to, to get your attention. At the moment, he's doing the cute look in the big brown eyes and thinking that's going to win him over. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, but um, any time the dog sits on your feet, leans on your feet, leans against your legs, 
um, lies across your feet. Um, if you sat on the ground, he'd be straight on your knee. Yeah. Um, all that is designed to dominate, mm. and it's all his desire to be up higher than everybody else. He okay. knows he's not allowed on the furniture, so he hasn't tried to. Right. But if I asked him up here, he would be more than happy yeah, to sit beside me. <laughs> Absolutely. So it yeah. may seem like a cute position, but beware, it's actually a dog trying to get higher in the pack, so you might want to give it a second thought, and the dog tries to lie cutely on your... Your and it's also important to remember that what they do as a, an eight-week-old puppy may be cute. That dog's going to double, triple, quadruple in weight. Yeah. <clears throat> and you need to really ask yourself if it's going to be that cute when they're an adult. Okay, great. Now, Susan, you mentioned that biting is actually sometimes a form of getting attention. Mm -hmm. the, the dog may not be getting enough attention. How important is it uh, that a dog get plenty of exercise to prevent problems like biting? Well, exercise is one of those things that is a little bit breed dependent. Mm -hmm. And while I don't like to kind of classify dogs into breeds and stereotype them, because obviously there's huge variations within breeds, um, obviously the bigger the dog is, the more it needs to have some exercise. Sure. And also breeds that are, you know, like a hunting breed, bird dogs, that you like your setters, pointers, those type of big dogs, <coughs> excuse me, um, their natural instinct is to have some period of running. Right. So they need a good run at least once a week. Okay, great. So that involves taking them to a dog park, letting them mm. run off lead, Just, yeah. yeah, and letting them really stretch out. Sure. For your little dogs, not as important. What I find is more important, though, in, in helping your behaviour is doing things that exercise their brain. Yeah, giving them So some, some type of formal training, mm -hmm. um, using toys that um, actually they have to think about to work out, right. how to play with them, mm. all those kind of things. And your um, pet shop and, and vets all have a huge range of toys okay. that they can help you with with that. So will lots of socialization, training and exercise, <coughs> th has this been proven to sort of reduce aggressive behaviors like that? Um, well, socialization will always build on itself mm. so that the more socialization your dog gets, the healthier it's going to be and sure. the better it is when it's out in company. However, with a dog like my own, mm -hmm. um, if he has too much time so being social, he's naturally quite a dominant dog when he's in the company of others. True. So he can actually get too cocky too, if he yeah, has too yeah. much time. Okay, so. so I don't actually mind him meeting dogs that, that actually squash him down a little bit yeah, in yeah. terms of his, his um, dominance. Right. So. Big dogs, German Shepherds, that type of dogs, mm. big boxes that are really bouncy and able to squash them. Sure. Um, as long as it's done in a, in a friendly, non-aggressive yep. manner, mm -hmm. it's all good. Okay. Yeah. Great. Let's take a look at a slightly more painful problem than play biting. That is snapping. Kaya from Manchester writes us, Hello, I have a two-year-old male Yorkie. He is a very good pet. I'm very attached to him, but he has some serious behavioral problems. The main one is he snaps at my husband's two six-year-old grandchildren and them only. Can you advise me as to what the problem is? Well, it's interesting um, at this. It sounds very much like the dog has actually got a genuine fear of children. Right. She doesn't mention if he snaps at other children, mm -hmm. but I would possibly guess that that may be the case. Sure. Fear of children is a very normal thing for a dog to experience, um, especially a dog that is older, um, you know, like five or so. Mm -hmm and hasn't had a lot of contact with children prior to that. Often dogs that are brought up with children love them. Yeah. And, you know, they're really responsive to that. However, if a dog hasn't had a lot to do with a child and is suddenly found, finds themselves in, a, in the presence of a child, um, it's very natural for them to be frightened of them. Right. And children tend to be um, a little bit undisciplined in how they actually interact with the dog. That's true. Um, and so making sure that before you your dog meets children that they're really well handled is, is essential. Yes. Um, often in that sort of situation, unless you've got children that you can trust and that are responsible around the dog, mm -hmm. it's often a good idea to keep the two apart. Okay. Um, it's, it um, um, becomes a little bit of a management issue that people don't tend to lend you your, their children for your dog to practice on in terms of getting used to them. Right, yeah. <laughs> so um, it's not something that's that easily overcome. 
um, it, it basically you need to start with children of sort of eight or nine okay. and slowly work your way down in age sure. in, with younger and younger mm -hmm. children and it's not very easy to no, do not. but that's the way you do handle it okay. once again your alpha dog technique is very important mm -hmm. because you need to set up a situation where you're very confident your dog is feeling confident is feeling comfortable because in those situations it's much less likely to snap out of fear so um it also does come down a little bit to the demeanour of the dog. Mm -hmm. um, I'm quite happy with this one around children, yet he's never really had a lot to do with him. But he's completely, almost, reliable. Yeah. You know, I'd never ever say that your dog is 90, is 100% no. never going to bite. Right. But they would have to do something pretty nasty to this dog mm -hmm. to make him bite. However, my other dog at home, I don't let the two interact ever. Okay, that's no. interesting. Just because she's never experienced children, mm -hmm. the one she has frightened her and scared her, so now she thinks they're all like that. Right. And we touched on earlier, you know, the fear of children yeah. and how children behave. So they, they run around, they squeal, they mm -hmm. scream, they've got quick jerky movements, and they're just not always appropriate. Right. The other thing that children don't get is... We aren't very good at picking up dogs' body language. Children are even worse because they don't know it themselves. Yeah. So if your dog was backing off with a frightened look on its face, mm -hmm. most of us would realise, oh, the dog's frightened of me, I'm not going to keep that going. Mm -hmm. A child would just go, doggy, doggy, doggy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so the dog's going to get really frightened. Yeah. So the natural response with they're backing off and that's getting them nowhere is to then stand their ground and growl, mm -hmm. and then they'll lunge and snap. Okay. So... If you ever have got a young child around a dog that you don't know or a dog that you do know that hasn't had a lot of experience around children, you must supervise 100% of the time. Okay. And I always say, praise the dog for moving away from the child if it's frightened yep. so that the dog understands that that's what it's allowed to do. But you shouldn't ever growl at them um, for growling because if you do they'll learn to go from backing off to snapping with nothing in between. Yeah. And that's not necessarily a situation that you want to encounter. So I think it's quite important that um, you really do know what you're doing in that situation, and it is a situation that I would strongly recommend, if you can, to get a trainer to help you. Okay. Because um, it, there's a lot, of, a lot of emotion involved in it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of tension. And everybody's safety is paramount. Yeah. Because in most situations with dogs and children, the dogs are love family pet, the child's relatively new, but the child needs to be kept safe. Right. Because a bad experience at that stage can scar them for life, and it also might mean the end of a love family pet. And you don't really want to have to do that if you don't have to either. Yeah. So um, it's something that is, is really common, and I see a lot of people privately for that type of thing. Okay. Um, often it, it relates to when the child first starts crawling. Yeah. Um, most people are quite happy as while well the child's immobile mm -hmm. and it's sitting in a high chair or sitting on the sofa or it's been carried, yes. the dog can deal with that. Right. It's fine right. because it's the, the, it's, the dog isn't being pursued by yeah. the child. But as soon as the child starts to crawl, it's off after the dog straight yeah. away. And that's very yeah, frightening. It can lead to this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, the dog wouldn't be happy if you got down and crawled on the floor either. No. And so the child's not really all that different. It right. just doesn't talk like a person. It doesn't behave like a person. And the dog just doesn't understand. So basically, it's, it's aggression out of, of fear and confusion, really. So let's look at some of our biting problems. Our first uh, specific type of biting is biting of other dogs, which can be a very violent situation for dogs and dog owners alike as John from Sydney writes. Roger has always been pleasant and extremely friendly to all people and other dogs. This past month, while walking on a leash, he has attacked two yellow labs and a three-month-old Alaskan Husky. He has never acted like this. Is he turning into a dog that we cannot keep because he may bite someone? I have had, I've had dogs my entire life, and I have never loved a pet like Roger. It would break my heart to have to get rid of him, but I don't want to take risks with other children, other pets, or my own grandchildren. If he were to harm someone or someone else's pet, I could not get over it. Is there a reason for this change? Is there something I can do to remediate this behavior? So, Susan, what sort of, what, what might be the cause of the um, aggressive tendencies of Roger? Well, we're not sure from this email about exactly how old Roger is, mm -hmm. but that may have a key um, influence on 
the timing and why the behaviour has suddenly changed. Right. However, with problems like aggression, normally the first and most important step to take is taken to your vet. Okay. And you need to get them thoroughly checked to make sure that there's not some physiological problem that's actually making him become aggressive. Mm -hmm. It can be pain, it can be discomfort, it can be um, fr from a psychological point of view, but not behaviourally as such. Um, so that's the first thing to really eliminate. There's not a lot of point in talking to a trainer or trying to sort him out until you've had him checked. Okay. However, if Roger is a completely healthy dog, mm -hmm. then obviously we can then look to behavioural causes. Okay. So it sounds very much like Roger is, is a very much loved pet. Mm -hmm. However, yeah. that can also have some drawbacks in that he may be becoming a little bit spoiled. Yeah. And the, the, the problem with that is that when he's out and he's on a lead, mm -hmm. he's put in a slightly vulnerable position because he can't look after himself or his owner how he would like to. Right. Now, right. the other thing to think about is that he shouldn't have to look after his owner. His right. owner should be looking after him. Right. So we come right back again to the same old adage that's becoming a bit of a theme <laughs> of... The hierarchy at home. Yes, the alpha dog trait. A much loved pet is a wonderful thing, mm -hmm. but you have to be careful that they don't become spoiled. Right. Okay, so it's very important to make sure, first of all, <laughs> speaking of spoiled, <laughs> that um, Roger's owner has got a hierarchy quite well mm -hmm. sorted at home. Yes. And he needs to go through the training methods for that, and they're outlined outlined in um, some of the material available to the that's customers right, of Kingdom, Kingdom of Pets, Pets. Yep. and making sure that that's all really well well ingrained, well set in place and that Roger's accepting that. Okay, okay. that's the first thing. Secondly, when they're out walking, the owner really needs to take control of the situation sure. and make sure that first of all Roger's on a nice short lead, yep. he's walking well beside him, and that they're walking with a purpose. He doesn't necessarily have to be allowed to talk to any other dog. Okay. He just needs to be be walked like they're going somewhere, we always say. Yeah, with a purpose. Yeah. Yep. If they think that a confrontational situation is going to occur when perhaps you're walking down a footpath or something like that, and you can see another dog coming, without giving any cues to the, to the dog that it might be a time to become upset, you just need to deviate your course. Cross the road if it's possible, or perhaps move out onto the edge of, of a grass verge or something like that, right. just so that there's no direct confrontation. Mm -hmm. It's also a good idea when you're out walking to try and make sure that the two dogs aren't passing directly by each other, that there's a human in between, oh, right. if you know what I mean. Yes, yes. Yeah, um, that's, that's probably some of the good ways to look after it. If he really feels that there's a serious problem that could happen, mm -hmm he may wish for a short time to, to muzzle the dog. Um, whenever um, biting is discussed, safety has to be of paramount importance. Mm -hmm. Safety to your dog, to you, to other people, and to other dogs. Yeah, so that always has to be kept in mind. So he needs to judge how serious the situation has become, whether it's just that Roger's been able to get to the other dog to bite them, if he has been able to, then make sure he can't in the future. Okay. Yeah. But that hierarchy is going to be a key. So can you just give some of our listeners who might be new to uh, the whole idea of alpha dog training, what are yep. some common things you can do in order to make yourself the head dog? The head dog. Well, normally um, the most important thing well, we start with um, feeding. How, how and when you feed your dog. Your dog needs to always eat after you. In a pack, they would always eat in hierarchical, hierarchical order with the alpha dogs eating first, mm -hmm. and the next rung and the next rung and the subordinates as, as it goes down. Sure. The way you can do that with you and your dog at home is to eat something out of their bowl. Right. So yeah. prepare your dog's food, put some cling film over the top, mm -hmm. and eat off the top. So it can be a cracker biscuit. It doesn't have to be anything significant. When you're finished, then you put your dog's food down and say, okay, it's time for you to eat. Wonderful. Some people also choose to make their dogs wait and have a command before they eat. Mm -hmm. I use that for some dogs. It's not necessarily my normal routine, but it depends on the dog. Um, you need to make sure that you at all times maintain calmness, confidence, right. and your consistency of your training. Without that, you'll get absolutely nowhere. Because your dog really does follow your lead, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And if a dog is a pack animal, and without 
your leadership mm -hmm. that will take it on yeah. because it has to have a leader in a pack situation sure. and it's it's human family is its pack now so food, feeding your calmness your confidence and your consistency you need to make sure that at all times your dog walks beside you so that right. might involve a period of a month or so of actually no off lead walking mm -hmm. Um, you need to really drum into them some, some good training and discipline, making sure they sit when they're told that they lie down, if they're told that they heal, if they're told. Right. You want one command, one response when you're mm -hmm. working with your dog like that. It's not sit, 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 sit. Yeah. We want dog's name and sit and a response from the dog. That's what we're looking for. Um, you also need to make sure that at any time when the dog is anxious or nervous mm -hmm. that you display um, leadership so the dog can look to you for its cue right. on do I need to worry about the situation or can I handle it on my own mm -hmm. um, or can the person handle it on their own yeah. I should say sure, sure. <laughs> and the big one really is learning not to greet your dog when you come home or when you reunite with your dog after you've been separated for a period of time that's extremely difficult for a lot of people to yeah, do um, but I think people really underestimate the influence that that can have on calming situations down, right. calming down that period of time when, when you come home and your dog's in a little excited frenzy. Mm -hmm. Often that's not happiness, which we misinterpret it to be. It's often um, a release of anxiety okay. and it's not healthy. So, yeah. Great. Those are the, normally the keys that, that I use anyway. So that's, that's a great solution yeah. to dogs fighting other dogs. Yeah. Then. Okay. Great, so let's look at Edie's rather serious problem of dogs aggressively biting family members. Whitey has bitten myself, my 9-year-old, my 7-year-old, and my 18-year-old niece, quite a few people. He bit me when I was getting a pair of socks in his crate. He bit my 9-year-old and niece when they were taking away a treat that he wasn't supposed to have. He bit my 7-year-old when she was taking Kleenex away that he was chewing on. I realize that he thinks that those treats are his and he is possessive with food. I have four children age, ages two to nine. I can't have him biting my children or their friends when they come over. I've made rules for my children to shut doors so Whitey won't have uh, the Kleenex out of the garbage cans or underwear out of the laundry baskets and chew them up. There are also rules about not taking things away from Whitey, but they are kids and they don't always listen. My home is becoming a place that is not safe for my family. Whitey needs to change and not bite or he will need to go. Please help. So quite a few problems there, quite a few people involved, uh, basically the whole family. What, what can uh, Edie do to start uh, solving the dog's biting problems? Well, Edie's probably lucky in the sense that Whitey hasn't actually chosen to bite anyone who can actually have some influence over his future. True. Um, and from that sense, she's lucky. However, this is a serious but very common problem. Hmm. And it's probably been going on for some period of time, right. and it's it's... Even though he may not have actually gone as far as actually biting somebody, there would have been signs a lot earlier that um, he was certainly becoming defensive about some things. And often people miss those signs. So because we miss them, the next escalation for the dog is to bite. Yes. And that's a perfectly natural thing from the dog's perspective to do. However, it's definitely not socially acceptable and people can really get hurt. Um, it's interesting that she herself hasn't been bitten. Yeah. Um, which it could be a trust issue, it could be, um, but more than, more than likely, the dog is actually biting the people that he has no respect for. Right. Um, she says that she's got four children, was yes, it? Two yeah. to nine. Two to nine, yeah. Yeah. I often say that it does depend on the child a little bit, but very few children under 10 are seen as an object to respect by a dog. Mm -hmm. They simply... Especially once they're under about eight, the dog doesn't really see them as, as human in the sense that they behave far more like a dog's prey will right. than a human does. So children are on the ground a lot, they run a lot, mm. they don't walk, mm. they have high-pitched squealy voices, yeah. and they're prone to really sudden jerky movements. All those sort of things can really, really upset a dog, sure. especially a dog who has been given a role that, of leadership in the family and it can't kind of really handle it. It's like asking um, the new person on the job to run the company for yeah, the next very month. very stressful for the dog. Very, very stressful, mm. yeah. And that can lead to problems like snapping, like he's doing. So yes. he's possessive over food, he's possessive over toys, he's possessive of a sleeping area. So all these sort of things need to change. Right. She definitely needs to have a rule in the house 
that no one is to interact with the dog without her being present. Okay. So they that's for a safety point of view. Mm-hmm. He's much less likely to react when she's around than he is when she's not. Okay. So they need to have a very firm rule about that, um, just simply so the children can't get into mischief. Sure. And because, like she says, children yeah. don't always listen. But they also need to be aware that when there are strangers in the house, um, it's not necessarily going to be healthy to have the dog around for him. Yeah. And this is one of those situations where I recommend that people protect the dog from itself. Okay. The dog is only doing what comes naturally, however it's not acceptable, yeah. and it has got danger elements to it. So it's very important that she looks after the human side of the family first yes. and deals with the dog at the same time, but separately, if she can. So you mentioned uh, dealing with strangers, which is yeah. actually our next problem. What, so you're saying keep the dog from, uh, prevent it from getting into problems well, with strangers in the first Edie, in this sp- specific case, needs to go through that alpha dog training as well. Right. However, that's only going to reinforce her position and it's not going to help the children. Mm-hmm. However, it's going to lessen any conflict between the dog and the children when she's present. So. This involves some time of allowing the children to grow up. Mm-hmm and also become part of the dog's training. Yes. Um, but over time, the dog will change its view of the child as it grows older. So the children need to be involved in things like doing some training, having some treats, but always with an adult present, okay. because this dog is obviously a little bit more respectful of people than it is of, of children. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, as far as the niece is concerned, um, it's, it could just be part of that stranger danger that, that the dog's feeling, that it's not feeling comfortable when there's someone around. It hasn't been around that person maybe long enough mm-hmm. to to have formed uh, some, any sort of hierarchy so that it snaps straight away so that it's not, not um, getting um, pressured by that person to, to do something or, you know. Often when we're asking a dog to give up a toy, it's actually really wants that yeah, toy. Yeah, sure. It's like the young children playing with something that's new, you know, mm-hmm. and that's exactly what this dog is doing. It.